I have a funny question for you. Uh, a person who you know very well says me, who is the best chef and the best wine, uh, wine skilled person in the, in the Euro League? Did Yale say that? <laughs> Did Yale say that to you? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, he, he's, a, he's a good guy, man. He always had great wine for me, you know, with great food places around Europe. So. He treated me pretty well last year. <laughs> he, he says uh, to the, this, uh, this sentence, why you play, uh, we finish at the rim with the right hand only after your third year, third years old? Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> I guess it's obviously uh, Emilio was a great trainer there in Munich. Okay. You know, he you know, schooled me in on a little bit of things. And, um, you know, I guess as you get older, you got to explain your game. They say, you know, uh, when you're young, you can pound, pound, finish with the left. But I mean, I guess, with maturity and experience, you know, extra few points with the right hand is pretty good. <laughs> right, right. Uh, in the, at the beginning of your career, you start uh, in Indiana, you were born in Indiana, and uh, in the America, I say, there's 49 states and the Indiana about basketball. But why? I mean, well, you got to understand, Indiana, I mean, it's, it's where it all started. You know, basketball, that's where it's, you know, it started. Um, you know, um, and it's a great basketball state. You know, from the Larry Bird, so all those great guys, and um, the passion of basketball in Indiana is very, very passionate. They take it very seriously. Not so much football, but a lot of basketball around there, and, and they do it with pride and passion. You were Mr. Basketball Indiana. What does it mean for you? It means a lot. I mean, you know, growing up as a young kid playing basketball, I mean, it, it means that you uh, and the talk of, of the greats who came out of Indiana, and that was one of my goals, and um, and I achieved that. You went to Ohio State at uh, the University. You played with Amedeo della Valle. Yeah. And what, what, what do you remember from him, from his experience? Because he was one of the first Italians to do that trip. Uh, I mean, I, I remember Amadeo came in, a little skinny guy, but uh, man, great, uh, great scorer, uh, great shooter. I remember, you know, helping him out a couple of times when he was a freshman, you know, taking him to his apartments, you know, giving him some some uh, money for some food, uh, but um, Amadeo is a great guy. I mean, actually, we still conversate to this day around Milan and trying to help me out with great restaurants and stuff like that. So we keep that connection. <laughs> and you ask something about Milan and wine to Daniele too? Uh, to Daniele? Uh, yeah. Not, not Amadeo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, to Daniele, I for sure. <laughs> I got it, I got it. Uh, you play, as, uh, as we said, uh, with Ohio State and uh, you win against uh, Kevin Pengos Gonzaga. You already talked to him about that game? Yeah, we, we talk about that a lot, especially that was the year we went to the Final Four. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, obviously we had a great team. They had a good team, but, uh, you know, we was better. Uh, we joke about it a lot. You know, I'm saying there's more Ohio State fans than Gonzaga fans. Uh, but, you know, he had a, he had a tough game that, uh, that game, but, you know, I think their team played well. We just came out with the win. What do you remember most about your career at the Ohio State? Which, which was the best moment and the worst moment of your career? I think the best moment was obviously that sophomore year coming in um, uh, and proving a lot of people wrong from the freshman year, um, getting to the Final Four, being one of those main guys. Uh, you know, especially one of our big guys, Jared Sullivan, went down. I think that was one of the best moments, just achieving those goals. and. Um, I think uh, the worst, hey, getting foul trouble in the Final Four, you know, okay. that year. I mean, I never got into foul trouble and wanted to win it so bad, especially being one of the main guys and being in foul trouble really, really haunted me that uh, these days. Still, still hurting, still, still hurting. hurting. Still hurting. <laughs> and uh, why did you choose to go abroad and uh, go to Europe? Because uh, the NBA is still uh, a dream or uh, is a personal and life decision? I mean, uh, obviously, in the back of your mind, you you know you always like, damn, if you have a foot stepped into in that door in the NBA. Obviously, growing up, you always wanted the NBA, especially for a guy like me, McDonald's All American, five star stuff like that, recruit. Um, but I mean, I chose Europe, and it was a I, I, personal decision, family decision, um, you know, opportunities. Um, and then, as you know, I've been in the best cities for so far 10 years of my career. Yeah, absolutely. So it has been a blessing that way. So I think it was more of a personal decision for me. Obviously, the NBA is always a goal, um, you know, because that's what you want to achieve. But Europe is not bad. And I achieved a lot in Europe and it's been blessed me and showed me around the world a lot. 
you start your career, European career in Nanterre, and you played an outstanding game in Barcelona. Uh, what do you remember about that game? Probably the best victory ever for that, uh, that team. I think that's, that's I mean, well, bigs up for Nanterre and the club well, for getting that opportunity to play in EuroLeague and giving me the opportunity to play. I think that's where it's all started my mark, mm -hmm. you know, for me. Uh, personally, uh, I think having that game, winning that big game against a good team with NBA players on that team, yeah. um, that, that led prolong my career, the, you know, for that, especially playing a three. Um, you know, obviously a couple of end towards my career, I've been playing a four, but that lets you know how versatile. But I think that game expanded my career and for Europe and put me in great situations. Do you prefer to play a three or a four? Only a, pre a personal preference. I mean, you got to understand, um, the game is small ball now. Yeah. I mean, obviously I've been successful a lot at the four. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, obviously at Barcelona, I played it 3% of the time um, and I was successful there. Um, and that was more so of like a approved, you know, the NBA teams and teams around that I can play the three. But I mean, you know, they, they say I'm a mismatch nightmare. Mm -hmm. Obviously at the three in the low post, it's tough to guard me. Obviously at the four, versatile, can shoot it, can be quicker than most four. So I think uh, for me, it's whatever coach need me to play. Uh, I'll try to adjust uh, and, you know, and trying to be successful at it. Do you think that game with Nanterre opened the door for your next step in Barcelona? For sure. I mean, I, I feel like it's a lot, it happened to a lot of players. Have you <laughs> noticed once uh, players have played in small teams or if it's in Europe or Euro Cup and get a chance to play in Euro League, play against that team, they end up signing to that team. Mm -hmm. So I think that started right there. I mean, they needed a, a three-man. Papa Nicolau obviously yeah. went to the NBA. Uh, and I was the next available and they probably remember that game that I had and wanted to bring me in and that's what is open. What are the biggest, what is the biggest change from uh, Nanterre and the Barcelona, a powerhouse in Euroleague? Everything is, I think, so different. I mean, obviously Nanterre is a small club, you know, uh, obviously, you know, you know, they wanted to compete, um, but Barcelona is on a whole nother level. You know, everybody, team that always gets to the Final Four, always have big names. The culture is there, something special, um, you know, and the passion for the game was is crazy. It's very, very different. Nanterre was something that an opportunity they got and they they used it. And, you know, and I was glad I was part of that to be successful, to, you know, be Nanterre. Hey, we beat Barcelona that year. So <laughs> and I'm glad I was part of, the, part of that. You play for Rick Pitino. Uh, we what type of coach he is? Is I think demanding his career talk for himself, but what are the emotions and the privilege I suppose to play for him? I mean, it's been amazing. I mean, you got to think about it. Um, his passion for the game, his knowledge. I mean, he's a Hall of Famer. You know, he coached against the greats. Obviously, you know, he has his demanding uh, uh, things out of players, but it's just to make players better. I know me playing for him the first year he came in, um, he made me into a believer, made all of us into a believer. That second half of the season he came in, we had to win eight out of 10 games. He made us a believer. He gave us the fight that we need and we, and we got it and got to the playoffs. And you know, that was probably one of my best careers. And then this, the following year, still one of my best careers with him. So, I mean, he made me into a believer. He got the best out of me and I appreciate him for that. He says uh, you were probably the best player pound for pound for that EuroLeague season. I think uh, it's an honor for you. Very honor. I mean, I'm glad. I'm, I'm, I'm sad that COVID hit because that was my best year. I mean, with averaging 14, 15 points, the uh, team was playing well, well. And that was a great compliment for coming from a Hall of Famer. And I really appreciate it from that. And um, that lets you know that he loved my game and the passion that I have for it. Do you think, do you think he, he has changed some perspective, perspective around the European basketball with his arriving in Europe? I mean, yeah. I mean, um, you got to think of a uh, Hall of Famer who tried Europe. I mean, that's good for Europe, man. You know, that lets you know how Europe can get those connections and other clubs can get connections to bring legendary guys over here. And it's good for Europe. You know, it's good for business, good for everything. And it brings up the culture. They let people know in the States that if a Hall of Famer coach can come over here and coach, they let you know how good the players is and how Europe is and how important Europe for basketball is. Do you think someone can uh, do this trip back? Some Italian or European coach could one day uh, train an NBA team? I mean, it's possible. Anything's possible. <laughs> you know, anything's possible. If that coach can, you know, obviously have great success 
over here in Europe and around the world, connections. Obviously, it's all about connections. And for sure, why not? I mean, you go to play Far East in Japan, if I'm not wrong. And uh, so many players, in particular American players, uh, make this, de this decision. In your opinion, why? For your uh, your situation and for other guys' situation? Um, you gotta understand, for, after the COVID year, it was tough in the market in Europe. Um, obviously, I had one more deal on, on Pana, mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's always a business decision you have to do personally for family. So, I mean, that was the only opportunity. I was very surprised at the time for me having a, coming off that great year mm -hmm. that was no team wanting to, you know, okay. pick me up, you know. So, but I get it in the market, you know, COVID, a lot of teams probably with budget was going to go down. But I mean, I decided to go to Japan. I mean, to test it out. And it was Tokyo, another great, another great okay. city. So, um, you know, obviously financially wise it was amazing. The city was amazing. And it was more of a personal and family decision in that way too. And what about the level of, of basketball in Japan and in the Far East in general, in your opinion? Um, it, it was actually, when I got there, it was just started, four years. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think the level is, is, is there. Obviously, you can have three Americans you know, on the team. Uh, I think it is, it's, it's a four or five man league, but now they're starting to bring guards over there. I think the level is pretty competitive uh, for the most part. Um, you know, um, you know the Japanese guys are very smart, very fast. You know, obviously when you got the the good Japanese on your team, so I had the great Japanese players. All about ten, six of them was on a national team. So okay. it was it was great level basketball for sure. Why do you choose the Olympia Milano for this season? Do you have any other offer? Uh, and I ask you, was Virtus Bologna high on you too? Um, I mean, of course, at the time, you know, I was actually was on um, a vacation, you know, I'm trying to make a decision and, and stuff like that. They were high on me um, and Milan came apart. You know, obviously, um, you know, Messina being underneath the Spurs, uh, the, you know, what they what they brought up on here with the, the, the team that they had. I think I uh, would have been a better fit and a better, you know, to reach the final four with, with, with them, uh, you know, I think they are more comfortable with the decision to make in Milan. Okay. And uh, it's all about the learning curve for yeah. this group. Uh, yeah. uh, what do you think uh, you can reach? Uh, probably the final four, you can compete for every title, I suppose. There's a lot of talent. Uh, which is your, what is your impact with this, uh, with this environment and this team? I think uh, my impact is just, you know, uh, just being aggressive, uh, you know, obviously with the talent team, it's always going to be up and down season. We still got to hit our peak. And I think once we continue to stay focused and compete, the sky's the limit for us, and especially for myself. Uh, I think I can bring a lot to this table with the team, you know, by helping them in rebounding, uh, shooting down threes, mismatch. You know, just being that player that being so aggressive. And we're going to get there. And I believe in this team and I believe in the coaches. And um, we just need to hit our peak and we're going to go on from there. Probably had to go to go three more than four this season, in particular now without the Siobhan. Yes, yes, but it's uh, it's always up for the challenge. Like um, like I said, that nobody believed I could have played the three when I started in Barcelona because I was playing the four in Ontario, yeah. and you know I, I proved a lot of people wrong. But the three position in Europe, you just got to be solid. You know, you got to be really solid. You know, you know, be a very impact at that three position, and um, I think I can do it for sure. I mean, slowly, slowly getting there and. It's okay. going to get there. Last question. You have to name five uh, more best underrated players in your league. Not in the tire with me, Cic, Miratic. One step down. Underrated? <laughs> it's a tough one. Oh, it's a tough one. Very good player. You play with. Uh, you, you could put Devin Hall in there. He's really coming along um, for sure, Devin Hall. Um, I mean, you can put Siobhan in there too. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's a very talented player. Just don't get a lot of credit of where everybody thinks. Well, now Yabuselli is, is very well known. Cool. Well, we can we can take the Yabuselli. Hey, we'll take Yabuselli. Yeah. We can put Yabuselli in there. Um, who's else underrated? Someone uh, in Munich? Well, Lucha, huh? Lucha is very, I mean, you got to put him in the, up there. I think he's, the, the course of his career, he put in a lot of work and a lot of make a lot of noise. So that's four. Um, five. Oh, Dave Lighty. Okay, great, great. Dave Lighty, my Buckeye teammate for sure. I mean, the, the success he had in Asheville and 
the way he's playing and the consistency he has been, very underrated for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck for the season. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.